Hi, Sarah. Hi, Frank. Nice to see you. Nice to see you too. It's um, it's really amazing uh, talking to you. Um, we've been um, trying to set up this conversation for for a few weeks now. Yeah. Uh, so, I was having uh, a hurricane, so it's, yeah, it was pretty. Yeah, it's been a it's been a wild uh, turn of events. But I was coming yeah. in from London. You were in London, and then all of that happened. So yeah, yeah, it's nice and to I'm, see you. yeah. Be, being stuck um, in a hurricane is a pretty good excuse. You know, I think that, I know, right? that does like, it. I say, you know what? I have to put the, the interview on pause. I lost power. Because <laughs> of hurricane, yeah. Yeah. And I'm but anyway, not- I, really, so. I, I, I really wanted to talk to you um, um, for, for many reasons. Um, you live in the U.S., the, um, the heart of the beast. You are um, of Palestinian origin. You... Um, an actress. Um, so there's so much that's been happening since October the, th- the 7th in regards to um, people not being scared to use the, the Palestine word any longer. But a lot of people have faced repercussions. Some people have decided to remain silent. And some people like, like, like you, for example, have decided that despite the potential repercussions, there was, there was no way you, you, you were not going to talk. And, um, and actually, you said something, I think, months ago, correct me if I'm wrong, um, you said something like, um, you explained why you were not posting yourself having fun anymore on Instagram. Um, and um, maybe I wanted to start with this, like, because it's been a question for many of us, activists, you know, Palestine supporters of Palestinians, you know, can we still have fun while this genocide is going on, you know? And um, so why did you decide at some point that everything in where you're going to post was going to be about Palestine? Yeah, well, I think, you know, for me, I, I have a responsibility. You know, it's an honor to come where I come from. My, my father was born in 1944 in Palestine before Israel had, you know, existed. He had survived the Nakba, he survived the Six Day War before eventually coming to America. Countless beatings, torture, you know, being put in in jail or as we say hostage because he didn't even commit a crime, you know. Uh, But also I have a beautiful family history. My uh, my ancestor actually, um, he helped fight the Crusaders back in the 12th century and because of this he was awarded a substantial amount of land in Palestine and uh, it's it's incredible. I mean, you wouldn't know kind of by looking at our, our situation today because, you know, we're under segregation and my family are not allowed to go on separate roads and, you know, treated like if like if they're, you know, imp- imposing themselves or, or like they're they're being treated as if, you know, they just um, are trying to take over this land, but in reality, like they've been there forever and they're under this, you know, um, occupation and segregation. So, you know, being here, it's it's really incredible because I feel like I'm able to look at this through a different lens. I'm able to look at it as being American and seeing my father go through everything that he's been through. You know, when he came here, he actually married my mom who was an Irish woman. And so, you know, it was interesting because I would always hear things and I, and everyone, people would make references to like my father being a terrorist and call us camels and stuff like that. But um, I, I, I honestly, I kind of like shrugged it off. Like that was my whole life, you know? So it's not like I really, to be honest with you, I didn't take it personal. Like, okay, yeah, I'm a terrorist, huh? Like I, uh, it's embarrassing to say now, but um the the older I got, this is the more that I would see on television the way that uh, we were per- portrayed on TV. I remember specifically, like, even Wayne's World. <laughs> Wayne's World's such, like, a fun, you know, movie, but then there is this specific part in Wayne's World where you actually see, like, you know, the Arab guy, and it's, like, this whole, like, uh, terrorism plot that they have to put in there, so... Um, there was just constant references this whole time. And I said, you know, I, I know that coming from where I come from, seeing what my family has been through, I have to, it's always, it's, it's who I am. It's literally in my blood. And it's something that I'm very proud of. I'm not ashamed at all. And uh, 
I've been, this is not like a new fight to me. When October 7th happened, I actually, people were so upset with me because they were, they were texting me as if I'm like, you know, the one in control of things because I'm Palestinian, you know? And they're like, oh my God, I knew it. Like, can you believe what Hamas did and all this? And they're putting their blue squares. And I'm just sitting there like, what in August, they, a human rights organization had just put out a statement pleading with the he, uh, pleading for help from all the United States and everyone around them because over 200 children had been targeted and killed and they were saying like this is becoming like nonstop where children are being targeted but you know it's been to, every year 2021 2014 2019 I mean I can list so many different you know offenses and they just ignore them, ignore them. And then, and then some people would say, like, I have to speak out. Uh, and the crazy thing to me is all of these months later, they're silent about, you know, what Israel's doing, but they're not speaking at all, uh, you know, to, to help the Palestinian cause. And I've had personal conversations. People have told me, you know what? I appreciate what you're doing. You're so brave, which I'm not brave. I'm human. Uh, but they say, you know, I can't because I'm working with this producer and, you know, he's, you know, I'm scared to lose my job or whatnot. So I just, what's the point of being an actress and telling stories if you can't tell your own story and if you can't be genuine to yourself? Yeah, I mean, what you were saying just now about people being upset at you after October the 7th, as if you... You know, this is something that, it, in a way, it's a trope that comes back. I spoke to a Palestinian author, a French Palestinian author, about five days ago, who, th who said that after October the 7th, he felt he was back after 9-11, where he had to justify that being a Palestinian is not being a terrorist, being an Arab is not being, you know. And he said, like, wow, I, I remember experience, experiencing this after 9-11. And after October the 7th, at least for the first few weeks, we were back at the same. You know, the, the, the phrase and the question, you condemn Hamas, you condemn Hamas, that everyone had to face over and over again. Now, how yes. do you deal with that, you know? Well, the thing is also, I mean, it's so interesting because people will point out and they will literally say, well, you have to think of the root cause of what's happening right now with, you know, why is Israel attacking them? The root cause is they'll say uh, is Hamas and it's October 7th. But that is such, I mean, that shows you the level of cognitive dissonance because you think one day that someone just wakes up and they're like, you know what, today I'm gonna be Hamas. No one does that. Like it is, this takes years of coming to this point where you can no longer take it. I mean, imagine like, imagine a, a pit bull you know, being being locked up in a den and you shoot that pit bull's family and you and you beat it every chance you get. And if it tries to go outside, you beat it some more, you know, and and you could you control, obviously, the dog's food. So you can just give him little scraps. You want to you want to uh, starve him, you starve him. If that dog got out, it might bite you, you know, and I think one thing we really need to pay attention to is I'm not a scientist, uh, but if you if you look at the like neuroanatomy of the brain, if you study psychology and you see the way that things can be uh, this this deep rooted, uh, it's like a, a deep wiring, almost core memories, you know, that have been kind of inflicted upon you since you were a child. So what I'm saying is. Like I said, if you're seeing something on TV that's depicting an Arab in a certain way, or you're seeing images of 9-11, these, these images of 9-11, th this is a core memory. And, and you, it, you know, in the brain, they will think of 9-11, they will think of terrorism, they will think of, of, of Arab. That's Im immediately, like they put that together. So what happens is it becomes this sort of systemic racism. So it doesn't like happen overnight where, you know, you say, no, no, this is not how it is. There's, you know, we're not terrorists, we're good people. Da, da. This takes like a lot of educating. And so there's this part of me, and maybe that was growing up in America, where I can see uh, why people feel a certain way because I see the brainwashing that goes into it. It is the same thing that I see 
with black people in America, to be honest with you, and other parts of the world. You know, I mean, we abolished a slavery how many years ago, but still to this day, a black person cannot, you know, uh, be stopped outside by a cop and not be terrified for their life. It's, it's something that is deeply rooted. And it's so incredibly important to to really make change because if we don't, it's only going to get worse over time. Yeah, you know, I'm a, I'm a kid of the 80s and I remember in the 80s watching all these like... Um, like kind of war movies and stuff, like kind of B movies, you know, like Chuck Norris and stuff. Yeah. And uh, I never really realized until a few years ago that in the sort of Chuck Norris movies and stuff, all the bad guys were Arabs, but actually all the Arabs were Palestinians. And it's only like a few years back that I was, oh, shit. Actually, so, uh, you know, what you were saying about this like brainwashing that these people are the devil, you know, they are not like us, they don't, cherish life like us you know and you still hear it, hear it now which is for me the most de the deepest racism you know when you hear people say you know oh they've got like seven children you know so they want them to be martyrs they don't really if they lose one or two it's okay they'll be martyrs it's actually Islamoph Islamophobia and anti-Palestinian racism at, at, at the deepest deepest level right yeah, and you're seeing a lot of it, you know, I feel like in, in the entertainment industry. And we're not talking about some type of like conspiracy theory, uh, you know, Pizzagate type stuff, because that was absolutely ridiculous, you know, oh, Hollywood eating <laughs> the blood of people. That's absolutely ridiculous. But but you can see this culture, and this is, this is not a secret. I mean, you see the top agents, the top agents, those are the people who represent us casting directors producers directors this is how we work this is how we get money you don't you don't just become an actor and say you know what i want to be in this movie no you have to go through a certain you know there's a certain uh protocol that we do you know there's you know you audition but to audition you have to be submitted for the film so if all of these people are saying like we've had these leaked documents from you know top wme agents and to say, we, we cannot work with anybody who's pro-Palestinian. We have a top PR firm in Hollywood saying the exact same thing. And these are emails that have been exposed. And there's no repercussions. I mean, you have another agent, uh, Maha. Uh, she was at, I'm not sure if it was CAA or what it was. Excuse me, I'm sorry for that. But immediately she calls out Israel and boom, she's fired. The only reason she was brought back, because I, I think if this is true, was something with Tom Cruise or something like that, like uh, putting pressure to get her back. But we are so easily dismissed. It's, it's really sickening. And then you have Michael Rappaport who can sit there and laugh in the face in that pager attack. There were two children that were killed. There were doctors that were killed. They're not, they're not targeting terrorists. I mean, these are civilians. And for that guy to sit there and laugh, ha ha ha, you know, that's like he put out this video of laughing about that incident. Yet this guy is still able to hold a position within our uh, within our union as a member of sag nobody said a thing that is unbelievable to me that you can actually promote racism islamophobia out in the open it was the same thing with amy schumer it was the same thing with sarah silverman Th there are so many people who did it and nothing uh nothing has happened i mean chelsea handler selma blair there was a, a bunch of it going on and you know to be honest with you and and they sit here deborah messing and and they sit here and they'll put out these statements and not only does nothing happen they don't face repercussions but they're actually awarded they're awarded with tv shows they're awarded I, I mean i'm watching tv and i see a tampax commercial and amy schumer's coming up on there and i'm like how? How can you make such terrible statements of rape and all of this and, and still be given jobs and opportunities? And then I see they're on the cover of Variety, her and Selma Blair. As a, as a Palestinian, I just, I cannot help to feel this segregation, this being targeted. And you know what? If I don't work, if I don't get jobs, 
I don't, I don't care. What, it, what does money have to do with anything or fame? There's nothing more important to me than making this stop right now and giving them, the Palestinians, the freedom that they deserve. Hint lives in my mind every single day. There's not a day that goes by that I do not hear that phone call. And it is disgusting to me that again, these people are able to get away with this and they say the reason they're able to get away with this is because they're indigenous. You know what? And I'll put this out there. If Amy Schumer, Deborah Messing, Michael Rappaport, really, I'm, I'm really challenging this. If they wanna do an, uh, a DNA test with me and, and really see who's indigenous, I'm 100% up for I really am. I really wanna see if it comes down to our DNA, who's indigenous? I'd love to know, I really would. So if, if anyone wants to take that off or, um, for those people that I mentioned, you know, Deborah Messing. Let's do it. Let's see if you're if you're Middle Eastern, you know, I'll shut up and I'll say, you know what? You know, you are Middle Eastern, you're indigenous, I'll back off. It still doesn't give you the right to kill people, I'll tell you that much. It still doesn't give somebody the right to, you know, ethnically cleanse. But just for the sake of argument, I'll I'm down. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. Like, yeah, I've, you know, I've heard this new, I mean, you feel like, in a way, that Zionism invents new things, you know, um, to justify itself more and more. And like this new thing, this is pretty new now. We are indigenous. Like, when I heard that, I was like, come on, like, please, you know, there's a point where you've got to stop. I mean, from the outside, it looks so ridiculous. But then, with propaganda and stuff, it kind of works and it drives you completely mad. And the fact, as you said, that someone like Michael Rappaport would not only condemn Hamas, who condemn war crimes, but actually celebrate Palestinian death. I cannot it's believe so, it. It's, it's I, so bad, you know. It is, it's, you know, I, I will never... I I never celebrated October seventh the attacks on people. I don't I don't I don't think any innocent person should ever you know be killed. I would never celebrate the death of an innocent person. I mean that's like the human. Th I I can't even believe I have to say that out loud. Um, you know again coming back to Sarah Silverman, it's just for her for her to say that it's okay to starve the masses. It's okay to st it's okay to cut off food. What? Because and again, it's because they think they're indigenous. The thing is, you know what? It's not to say that Jewish people uh, were not also, you know, in Palestine or in the Ottoman Empire or or in Canaan. You know, it, it's not to say that there were Christians, Muslims, Jews. I mean, to be honest with you, they were actually considered Palestinians. If you look at historical Palestine, they're they are Palestinian. And when the Zionist movement was happening, a lot of those Jewish people were completely against what was happening. But what were they to do? Are they supposed to, you know, be killed? I mean, I understand. I understand if they if some of these people had to join this Zionist movement, but you know, it's crazy because you and I can talk about this, right? And it seems such common sense to me, right? Like we're human and I would hope that people want the best for society. There's so many people, especially in Hollywood, who choose to, uh, you know, take on these special causes about climate, about uh, diversity, inclusiveness. Um, and this is just like one topic for some reason that that for some reason they just they won't budge people will not budge on it and i don't understand it like i hope that i can make change i really i really do i i it's weird for me to feel like i have to beg for people to see us as human i would love to have conversations because it seems that a lot of people the the way that they uh, view palestinians they almost have this like certain narrative and i really hope that uh I, I, I would I welcome anyone to have a discussion with me and welcome them into my family and maybe tell them you know about what my family has been through I welcome it I welcome dialogue yeah and it's a I was talking to you know I've, I've been to Palestine really a few times and um, you know the way in the mainstream media Palestinians are portrayed are the people with like hatred in, in them you know um, they want to kill all the Jews, they want, and that's why Israel's got to do what what it's what it's doing. When you know the truth, 
when you know reality, when you've been in Palestine, and actually I was pretty shocked by that, because, you know, after like 40 years, 50 years of oppression and, and colonization and apartheid, you, you know, you could feel hatred, it'll be okay. But most of the time, what I found in Palestinians was they wanted justice and equality, and that's it. And they were like, Frank, we've been, you know, when you, you're being like beaten, tortured, over and over and over again the only thing you want you want is this to stop and once it stop you don't want to go and torture the you just want to live in peace and that's it you know and that's the only thing palestinians are asking you know justice freedom and equality and um, but i wanted to go back to um to hollywood or like the sort of movie industry in the us there has been some you know americans like white Americans taking a stand for Palestine, only a few at the beginning, but they were, you know, the repression, like you talked about Maha, but you, we, we remember Susan Sarandon, uh, yeah. Melissa Barrera as well. But I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, that we've reached a point where these people, Susan, and even more Melissa, because she's young and her career is, is, is still to be, made you know she's in a very difficult situation in terms of you know speaking politically they could have shut up after what happened to them but they did the opposite they redoubled you know talking about palestine and i think that this is only also because like when you're supported by by your collective you know you and you're surrounded by your peers and you feel that actually you know they see you and they and they want to support you and you know, the creation of artists for a ceasefire, for example, in the U.S., and, and recently this letter to, um, to SAG, you know, SAG-AFTRA, which um, asked the union to protect pro-Palestine members. The letter was signed by hundreds of, of, um, of Hollywood figures, including Mark Ruffalo, Rami Youssef, Griffin Dune, uh, Riz Ahmed. Do you think, do you think that the, the only way we can make a difference is it through this the power of the collective definitely i mean you know back in the 1970s you had vanessa redgrave i believe and she you know had done this speech on palestine and the oscars at the oscars and uh she never backed down and she did that for years and the thing is you know she gave up her career basically to do that i mean she definitely you know stopped getting gigs as she did that and uh, mark ruffalo actually was somebody who has always been outspoken about palestine and he was made to apologize a few years back i think maybe 2021 i was actually i was really surprised when it came to like susan sarandon and melissa barrera and uh I mean, uh, Melissa, I mean, they, they were called uh, anti-Semitic just for even um, bringing the word up, uh, genocide. They're not allowed to say this word. When, you know, if you look at the, the definition and the, I, I guess what they would say, well, it's not intentional targeting, but the thing is, it is intentional targeting and we have facts to back that up. And if you are ignoring that, then, you're simply ignoring the problem doesn't make it not a fact. It, it is a fact that these people are being intentionally starved and intentionally targeted. It's a fact that volunteer workers are and, and medical workers and children. So when it comes to that, it definitely opens the door. Now, when I found, so I found other people in this community and we started off like very, uh, a very small community, SAG members for ceasefire. And at first we would just start with like meetings about almost like what we were going through. It was like a support system, you know, like leaning on each other in such a difficult time. And we are just a group of all different, you know, types of people. A lot of Jewish members in our in our community, a lot of, you know, just different backgrounds in in, in all. And it, it just felt like a family, a sense of community. And what was beautiful about it is we, we knew we had to make change because this isn't, isn't the first time that uh, SAG has, you know, come out in support of Israel. I mean, our union president in, I think it was 2018, helped raise $60 million for the IOF. And, you know, f for me being Palestinian and, and, and 
being a part of this union and for her to raise funds that will hurt my family, that will continue to keep them under segregation and, and being targeted, that is so hurtful. So I definitely feel that the more people who speak out, it makes you feel like you're not alone. It gives that next generation the, um, it gives them like the safe space to speak out and you are noticing it growing. Um, like I said, there's still a lot of people afraid because like Susan Sarandon and Melissa, they're fired from their jobs. They're let go from their agents. It, it's not like there's, you know, no backlash for this or no retaliation for this happening. But it's crazy that we live in a world that we cannot criticize a foreign government without retaliation. I mean, this is absolutely, it's unprecedented. Like, I can't believe that this is really happening in 2024. But this is the reason why you and I sit here and talk about it. And this is why we have SAG members for ceasefire. Because if we stay silent the way people want us to because they don't actually agree, then there's no room for dialogue. There's no room for change. And, and nothing has ever changed in the history of anything without this happening, without an actual movement of some sorts. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's interesting what you were saying about this, um, these conversations you had, like these private, I guess, conversations with SAG members and, and that, because um, we had the same, like I, I, I worked with a lot of artists in, in France and, and in Belgium and in London where just being together, because I think we, we have to admit it, right? We've all lived under this kind of collective trauma over the last year. And sometimes you feel like it has to stop. It can't get worse. And then it always get, gets worse, right? Like just now, I mean, you thought genocide is pretty bad. I mean, there's nothing above it. But then you even feel that what's happening now in northern Gaza, mm -hmm. it's a genocide in a genocide. It's like, it's, it's crazy. Like, there's no more words. So just being with others felt like, at least, you know, um, and I, I spoke with Gabo Mate recently, and he said, you know, when you have a broken heart, sometimes it's good to be with other people that have a broken heart because you mm -hmm. don't feel alone. And I think this past year, and it's, it's also actually the the meaning of these interviews for me it's a, it's some some of them are very um selfish it's about trying to find help talking to people you know because otherwise you, you crumble i mean it's too hard to watch what's happening in, in gaza right definitely yeah i love that you said that because uh yeah i can't explain i can't explain the way i, I really truly felt like I, you know, as people look at me and they're like, oh, she's so bold, she's so brave. And you know, I was, when I was like doing these videos and all of this and losing friends and losing work and everything, like, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I would sit there and I was really in like a deep, dark place, you know, depression and, um, but I know that my life has a bigger purpose than this. And uh, I'm happy that it persevered and just kept uh, moving forward with it because I found this community and I really do think we're making change, you know, there's, it, it's not enough for me right now, to be honest, because we have, we have finally, you know, we had a small meeting with leadership and we're hoping that they take this serious because no one, no one is going to look back on this moment and, um, regret trying to save these children no one's gonna no one's going to look back i am i will never i will never look back and say i regret this i regret what i did i would regret if i actually supported israel doing this i, I would regret if i didn't stick up for it um so i think that uh yeah it, it's important and you know sometimes it comes with like there's I had this one person in the industry and she was very vocal about like pro-Israel and she had messaged me uh, like two months ago and she was like really, uh, sorry, are you, <laughs> oh, okay. No, 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 uh, sorry. It's okay. So she was, uh, she, she had finally kind of like 
come around and she's like you know Sarah I've I've educated myself so much and thank you like thank you for bringing this to my attention and I didn't know and she's like you know I am in this space right now though that I'm she's like I'm almost embarrassed for the way I for what I've the way I've I've spoken before and how I didn't know and she said um you know, and, and she's like, I want this to be a safe space, you know, with you and I to kind of go through this together. But, and I mean, I can be there for you, but I can't like walk, you know, and hold your hand through this. Like, this is something that we all kind of have to do. And she was, she's embarrassed to make a statement now because how she was so adamant before about, you know, supporting because she didn't know. And so I feel like we have to like give ourselves grace. I completely, I, I understand it as much as I, I disagree with it. I understand how at first people were unaware, but there's too much to ignore at this time. It is right in front of our faces. And I understand that the media is not showing everything that we're seeing, but all you have to do is literally follow live stream that is coming straight out of Gaza. You just follow the live stream. It's like we're, I'm not talking about edited vid videos or anything like that because I am 100% about fact checking. But if you see it and you see a child being shot in the face by an Israeli sniper, then you know that this is something bigger than the, us and you have to speak out. Yeah. I completely uh, agree. I mean, and I think you, you're entirely right. I mean, you know, a lot of people have, have mentioned this, you know, but, um, and I remember listening to this um, speech by um, a member of Jewish Voices for Peace very early, like three months after it started, where she talked about her grandmother during the Holocaust. And her grandmother said, like, the question I kept asking myself throughout my life, because she survived the Holocaust, where what were my neighbors doing? And I think in 10 years' time, you know, our kids, our grandchildren, are, you know, will ask us the same question, you know. And yeah. if, you know, what did you do during the Gaza genocide? Where were you during the Gaza genocide? And some, I guess some of us will be able to sort of look at them straight in the eye, you know, and some others will probably have to, to try yeah. to justify not speaking out, you know. I think I think those those uh, Jewish voices are incredibly important, you know, to say that my family had had been through this, you know, as as a, a you know descendant of a Holocaust survivor. I mean, this is one of the most horrific events in history, and so I think that's why so you see this huge movement of these Jewish people saying not in my name. You will not you will not take Judaism and say and conflate it with Zionism or what Israel has done. You will not do that in my name. And it's important to be vocal about that. And to say to the other people, like um these people who are who are using that, to to use like that against the, the Palestinians and and for the reason to do this to Palestinians is just like it's honestly it's it's abhorrent it's like it's it's truly horrifying and um i i really appreciate hearing those stories as well because one of the things we also talk about you know when we're in these groups of people in these settings is what their own families have been through so yeah i mean it's those voices are very important and i we have a lot of uh incredible Jewish voices uh, with us and SAG members for Ceasefire and also for um, artists for Ceasefire. Thanks, Sarah. You're welcome. Uh, I really thank you from the bottom, bottom of my heart for taking the time to, to talk to me to today. I appreciate it so much. I appreciate, you know, having the conversation and Hopefully um, things will, you know, get better. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you.